Uh, my name is Nicholas Kruk. Uh, I have up here helping me demo Chris Gray. Uh, and we're super excited to bring to you uh, what you've seen at the keynote a little bit. Uh, that's local development for Lightning Web Components. Uh, before we get started here, uh, just a quick reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Uh, you should make your purchasing decisions based on what's available in our product today, not on what we're presenting here. Oh, awesome. Jumping forward a little bit. Uh, the Lightning tooling team, uh, besides Chris and myself, a lot of these guys worked really hard to get local development to the place that it is today for this presentation. Uh, some of them are sitting in the audience here. And we're happy to take your questions afterwards for any things you might want to know about uh, local development for Lightning Web Components. And uh, we've also brought you uh, the component library, if you've seen that, uh, the Lightning Web Component Playground, uh, as well as the Aura and LWC language servers within VS Code. So we do a lot of cool stuff. But today is all about local development. So party time. Local development <laughs> is finally here. So many developers have asked me over the years about when are we getting local development for Salesforce. And it's finally here. So. We've, we've done a lot of work to really decouple uh, our UI framework from Salesforce's uh, org and backend structure so that you can now use Lightning Web Components offline on your local machine, writing your components like you would with any normal web framework like React or Vue or anything that you've used in your, in your normal development life. So this is really awesome. So if you want to jump to the next slide, Chris. Uh, what that really means more practically for you, I mean, besides the obvious benefits of being able to live render components locally on your machine without having to push to a scratch org or anything like that, um, behind the scenes, we're really using just an express server with Node, the LWC compiler, along with uh, some dependency resolution for things under the covers that you use, like Salesforce schema, like resource URLs, other things that you need uh, to be resolved for your components to work locally. We're doing that all for you under the covers so that you don't have to worry about it and your components just work locally without a hitch. Super awesome. One thing to call out here is really this is only available for LWC. So if you're not using LWC, you want to get on it as soon as possible so that you can take advantage of this awesome new feature. Um, this is going to be shipped as part of the SFDX command line tools. So you don't really have to use VS Code or anything else that we supply. If you want to use Sublime Text, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just have to have the SFDX command line tools installed, and you can run a command, and you'll be able to spin up the local development server, which we're going to show uh, shortly. Lastly, uh, we're looking to get a beta out this summer, so keep your eyes open for that. And uh, I think with that, let's just dive right into the demo, because that's the best way to show what we're doing here. So traditionally, what you've had to do with Salesforce is if you wanted to use your repository and view the components in it, you'd have to push to an org. So here we've got a scratch org that we've already pushed, so we didn't have to do that during the presentation. But essentially, this is the LWC recipes repository. Hopefully, this isn't the first time you've seen that. That's been public for a while now. This is some sample components that you can use with LWC that are really easy to get going. They have some good design patterns, uh, some examples, things you can get started in your org and start playing around with. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, if we want to tab through a couple of these components, we've got you know, ways of using static resources, using at wire examples, uh, using Apex. These are all things that you can do with this repository. So in today's world of local development, instead of having to do all of the work to push this to my scratch org, I can simply switch over to the terminal. Uh, we'll use VS Code here. Um, terminal and VS Code and kick off our local de development server command. This will spin up a, an express server locally that takes a quick second. You'll immediately see that there's a link that I can click, localhost. Pretty awesome. This will spin up to our landing page, which will allow you to navigate through the component list uh, on the file system within your SFDX project. So we have some other cool resources here linking you to the component library, the VS Code extensions, as well as some server configuration options, uh, which we can dive into later. But the main thing to note here is this component list on the right side is the full list of components that are in your SFDX products in VS Code on the file system. So if we want to dive in and just start editing a component, let's just jump to like the Hello World component, for example. We immediately see that this component gets rendered locally. That's at localhost. It's rendering. And it looks exactly the same as it looked in my scratch org when we just showed it earlier. So you're getting the same styling, uh, all the same component composition. And you're getting all of that for free on your local development server. If we want to jump in and make some edits to this component, we can use the open lightning component command, which is available as part of our uh, 
Salesforce DX extensions in VS Code, quickly jump to that component. If we want to make some changes to the JavaScript, we can change world to TDX or Trailhead DX, whatever you want. As soon as I hit save, notice that it's automatically and already refreshed in the UI so that my changes are right there, ready for me to test, do whatever I want to do. It works for JavaScript, markup, CSS. Not to beat at a horse, but you can see that this is working really quickly, and it's exactly what you would want from any modern JavaScript framework. And you're probably saying, well, this is a super simple component. What about my super complex components that have dependencies on my org? I have data that I need to fetch. I'm using uh, static libraries within Salesforce. I'm doing all these things. How, how can that possibly work? So let's, let's jump over to a more complex component here and look at uh, something that requires uh, data creation to my org. So this is a simple form uh, for the user that we'll use to create an account. Now, this wouldn't possibly work locally, but with the, power of SFT, with the power of SFTX, if we've already pushed to a Scratch org, we can reuse that authentication and actually create the account in your org for you. So you see Chris clicked the Create Account button, and you'll notice that we got an ID back. And this ID corresponds to the actual account that got created in my org that we proxied from my local development server. So if he hits refresh in my Scratch org here, you can see that that account showed up. Uh, it's pretty awesome and powerful that we're able to do this all from our local machine. So this works in reverse as well. If we want to jump to, let's say, a component that's using Atwire. Um, let's look at the wireless view. This is pulling a list of contacts from my org. So any contacts that I have there, if I create a new contact, I want to test this component further, this is going to do uh, make the API request to my org and actually fetch that data and then render it in my localhost environment so that I'm able to fully rely on my localhost server. You can see that that account, that contact got created, and it's showing up on our localhost server rendered in real time. So it's pretty awesome. And if you look at, if we go to the code and we look in VS Code what this component looks like, you'll see that this is not a simple component. This is uh, using all the complexity that's available to you in uh, LWC. We're using the UI list API that we're importing. We're also importing contacts. Um, and we're using an at wire to basically fetch all this data. And all of this is going to work out of the box for you with uh, uh, local development for Lightning Web Components. <coughs> all right, so let's, uh, let's jump into actual uh, what it would be like doing a normal development flow with this, right? That's where this really becomes valuable, not just kind of tinkering around. But if I wanted to start from scratch and create a new web component and then start editing and making changes. Let's, let's create a web component from scratch using our helpful commands within VS Code. Uh, maybe a new container component where we can start playing around with some of these examples. You see that we got this created immediately. And you'll notice that in the UI, the local development server has pulled that in already as soon as Chris created it. I can click on it and view this component that I just created. Naturally, there's nothing there yet because we haven't actually done anything yet with this component. Let's say we want to start going and making some changes here. Let's add some components that rely on static resources so we can start taking a look and seeing what these look like. You'll notice that in VS Code here, again, we're getting nice content assist on all of the components that are available locally. So Chris doesn't have to remember the names of everything. Um, as he's hitting save, the components that we're adding to this are appearing right in our uh, browser. So pretty awesome. Uh, we have this nice D3 component, which gives us a cool in graph, like inline graph. Uh, if you've ever used D3, it's pretty awesome. Let's add like the moment.js library. If we want to toss that in there, Chris, see what that looks like. You'll notice here that as I'm doing development, you might encounter an error, like you've all hit before. But normally, when you're doing this in SFDX, you've already tried pushing to your org, and then you're messing around with your flexi page, and you realize, oh, this is all broken. With the local development server, you're getting awesome errors in line and feedback immediately uh, right in the browser as soon as you hit save. So you'll we see here, oh, we forgot to use uh, the supported decorators and import them from LWC. You'll see that we actually pulled in the source code from that file and showed you the exact line that the error occurred on, as well as gave you some stack traces that are collapsed here that you can expand and dig into if you have a legitimate uh, JavaScript error. But the most useful thing is really that we actually provide you a link to VS Code. So you can immediately click that link and navigate to that file and fix that error right away on the fly without having to mess around. So 
And if we're good developers, we actually had the SFDX extensions installed so that we would have probably known about this already through linting. But um, let's go ahead and correct that error because we looks like we have a typo in LWC up there. So let's fix that and hit save. Everything should be good, but looks like we forgot one other thing. This is showing another error where we actually forgot to provide a required attribute for lightning input. So we're able to show that the specific tag that that error occurred on so that you know, well, this component isn't complete because we need to actually add in a, a label for this. Once we've added the label here and hit save, immediately this component re-renders, and you can see all of our components nicely in line on the page here. Pretty cool, pretty powerful, and I hope this is something that you guys uh, really find useful. Um, let's see, lastly, if we want to kind of dive back into the slides here for a second, Chris. I, I think you also wanted to mention that we were importing from the resource URLs here. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. So, I mean, I, just, just to show you that, I mean, all, all we figured out how to basically resolve all the dependencies you have within Salesforce. So if you have resource URLs, you have schema dependencies, you have Apex, you have UI API, your calls that you're making, we're able to resolve all of those on the fly for you so that you don't have to worry about making these work locally. You don't have to mock up your components. Everything that you're doing now is going to work out of the box with Local Development Server. It's pretty cool. So let's jump back to the slides for a sec, Chris. Um, just to kind of recap a little bit um, what we've seen, uh, obviously, we're trying to get that, this out to you as soon as possible. I expect something in the next couple of months. Um, you're going to be able to edit and view your components locally and have the awesome live reload functionality that you saw here. Uh, we're going to provide the data proxy to your org capability if you choose to use scratch orgs and, and push there. And then we have the beautiful errors that you saw earlier where it's easy to diagnose and resolve problems with your components before they've even started. Pretty awesome. Um, our roadmap going forward, um, we really want to provide flexi page support. So that's something we know that's super useful, and so you can test interactions between your components you know, locally. That's something the team's working hard towards, as well as making sure that Apex support is fully working. So just providing those two features are really part of what we believe is the MVP of this, this product. So that's something we're working really hard to get out. Um, uh, another feature that we want to add is uh, mock data support, so allowing you to use uh, the proxy to your org and live record that data save it locally and play it back so that you don't actually have to have an online connection at all. So that can help you get started with testing. That can help you uh, uh, start creating mocks that you want to have different test sets from. I mean, there's a lot of options that we could provide to you there. Um, but lastly, the most important thing is that we want to get your feedback. So if you like what you've seen here and there's other things that you didn't see that maybe you want, please come talk to us because uh, we'd, love, we'd love your feedback. If, you, if there's anything that you've seen that uh, you really think is awesome that we should improve even further, please let us know. And our team's going to kind of be hanging out after the presentation if you want to come chat with us um, afterwards. There's about 50 things we can implement for this feature. So we <laughs> want to make sure that the things that are important to you are the things we're targeting coming up soon for our beta and GA release. Yep. Awesome. Um, Lastly, what's, what's next? Uh, we got a bunch of other sessions that are you probably want to check out tomorrow. Um, I highly recommend any of these. If you want to pull out your phone, take a snapshot. Um, definitely go check out more about web components if you're looking to get started. We also have a booth right over there, uh, the Lightning Platform booth. Uh, we've been demoing local development, and everybody that's there will be happy to answer more questions uh, about it as well. And then uh, I think we're about to the end, so we've got about five minutes. If there are any questions, we could take them now. If not, otherwise, thank you for coming, and we're happy to talk to you kind of on the side, one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, we had one. We have one question. We did. <laughs> There's no runner. Sorry. We didn't get the mic, but just come on up. Yeah. <laughs> just come on up here. We'll repeat it for you. So I'll, I'll repeat the question. Nick can probably take the answer. He was asking, um, we're supporting this for Lightning Web Components. What happens to Aura Lightning Components themselves? Uh, are we going to be able to bring that to them? Yeah. So the current answer is that's not on our roadmap. But I mean, if that's something that you guys all feel you desperately need and yeah. you want, I mean, please tell us, because we can push that to our PMs. The, the main driver for us uh, to implement this for our LWC first was that 
LWC made some architectural decisions that made this particularly easy for the environment that we're coding in, right? Which is yep. Node, uh, operating on standards, using Express, or a take some different architectural directions, which make that harder. We'd have to ship you a Java server. Yep. It is open source, so we could do that, but we're trying to really be more standards-based, which is why we went LWC first. Yep. And you just l let our PMs know um, about the Aura thing and how important that is for you. It's not impossible, yeah. but, it's, but it's hard. <laughs> So the question was, um, LWC just went open source. Now if you go to lwc.dev, get the open source project, get that going, is, are we going to be able to use this in conjunction with it or also spin up our own live reload server with that? And realistically, we have worked with the SFDX guys to disconnect Salesforce a little bit from the SFDX project. So you will be able to use this directly with that. They also have some additional tools and some, there's just open source stuff on the web that kind of does some stuff similar. But yes, our goal is that you will be able to use exactly this on that open, oh, LWC open yep. source. As you saw on the landing page, there was some configuration there and that's when that's gonna come important because the file system is just a little different, right? So you'll just have to right. specify where your components are in the file. Yeah, for MVP, we kind of focused on the SFDX scenario, but obviously this is fully capable of working outside of that with some additional minor configuration because we're not inheriting that directly. From Love the questions. We still got three minutes, so. I think I talked to you earlier. <laughs> So the question was, you can't do dynamic component creation with LWC, and um, that is on the roadmap for what that looks like in an API. No one here really knows what that's going to look like yet. If uh, you're wondering if this helps with any of that, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. um, we are working on the API for that, and it's very complicated. Um, but we can put you in contact with the guys that you can communicate your use cases to, and they can incorporate that. Um, but Right now, if you have a component in here that you click and it just doesn't show anything, and that's because you need to provide it some attributes for it to do anything, you just have to create your own component that kind of hosts it and passes it to attributes. Right. And that's kind of the, the, the fake, that's the way to work around needing flexi pages at the moment, right? Yep. Until we get that support. Uh, two minutes, more questions, sure. Yeah, um, so the question was, for the static resources, where do we get that information? Yeah. yeah, so right now we're actually pulling it from the file system. So we're actually, we know how to map those to the actual imports, and then we're just letting Express know about that, serving it up, and then you can pull it down locally. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 All driven by the power of SFDX. Yeah. Love it. A uh, minute and a half, more questions, more feature requirements. Does anyone have anything they want us to implement first? Sure. Sure. Come on up. <laughs> so what cool thing are you working on next? What cool thing are we working on next? We're working on this a lot. <laughs> That's a, that, is, that is the main thing. GA for this, obviously. <laughs> and um, we want to get this out to you as soon as possible, right? Yeah. Um, we ha are working on the holistic, really what we're working on next is more features for this. And it's the last of that slide at the beginning. We said yeah. uh, Apex support we didn't demo because it's not implemented yet, but we have researched that and yeah. we know how to make it happen. Um, flexi page support. Realistically, there's, um, we would, right now we're only showing you this component in isolation on your page. It would be obviously, that's very limiting in how you interact with navigation events, um, anything in Salesforce Lightning Experience, mobile experience, any of those APIs that aren't just in this page, you're not really gonna get. So it would be nice as developers for you to be able to use that as well locally, right? So that's uh, yeah. something we're- Yeah, happy to talk to you more afterwards, uh, yeah. right over here. I think yeah. we're about out of time. All right. so don't wanna well, thank you very much, guys. Thanks everybody for coming. <laughs>